Man, oh man, have I been a terrible YouTube creator. It's been, what, two months? Maybe even a little bit longer since I've, since my For the Love of Cedar video, where I did my little experimentation. Well, a lot has been going on in those two months, and I'd like to talk about that and a slight change to the way that I do my videos. And we'll talk about all of those things here in a minute, but first, our introduction. I first want to thank each and every one of you for sticking around and being very patient with my uh, lack of of presence here on YouTube, but I thought this was a good opportunity for uh, this Memorial Day weekend to come out with another update video on the bus build and just overall progress that's been going on. Um, now, first of all, the reason why I have not been very active on my YouTube channel, or even active at all, I guess that could be questionable, is, well, Obviously, a lot of you know, if not most of you, that I do work, you know, lately, you know, 50, sometimes even 60 hours a week, which isn't really much of an excuse, but it does take a lot of time out of the, out of the day, along with three hours of commute to and from work. But on top of that, uh, a more immediate need to get at least a, a portion of the bus build done is because of the fact that uh, I've got my annual camp out that I do every year with a group of friends. Now normally that one is done in August there at the Royal Arch Park, but unfortunately because of some sort of human error that has happened, there was a mistake in scheduling, so now we have to have it at the end of June. In other words, a month from now. So I have a very limited amount of time to get the build done, well not the build, but at least be able to put a bed in the back. And of course for a while, I was actually, after I purchased this bus of mine, I, I was living in it, you know, at least part time, just to get a feel for how I want the the uh, arrangement of the bus to, to occur. But, uh, so now, I find myself kind of with these large projects, um, obviously you can see just right there, somewhere there, uh, I've got my uh, ceiling being worked on, uh, and that's been a long process. Uh, that's what the For the Love of Cedar experiment was for. So I've been working on that, I've got several lights up on the ceiling as well, and I want to actually go over another video about that, uh, about the lights themselves, because I used the original light fixtures for the bus because I wanted something original to the bus. Um, I've also now got a small TV, which I also kind of want to do a review video of that, uh, so you can look forward to that at some point, hard to say when, uh, but right now because of Memorial Day, I have a three-day weekend, and so I decided that I'm going to go ahead and tackle the floors. Now, unfortunately, it's a big task. Um, once I started to rip out the rubber flooring, that's when I discovered um, how big of a chore it was going to be. Um, now, I, I for the most part expected it, but nevertheless, it's still a chore. And that's not to complain, it's just stating the obvious. But, uh, so I already anticipated and planned on replacing the subfloor, which is half-inch plywood. Uh, but it looks like there is at least some rust, which also was to be expected. So I'm going to have to sand that and then go ahead and coat the entire sheet metal floor, which thankfully there is sheet metal because most wheelchair access buses do not have the sheet metal. It's just the wood floor. But since this is not a wheelchair access bus, I expected it was going to be sheet metal. But since each manufacturer is a little bit different, I, I wasn't completely 
confident that it was going to be. So I already had uh, looked up a, a fabrication company that deals with selling wholesale uh, sheet metal just in case I needed it. Thankfully, I, I shouldn't. The metal actually looks in pretty good condition overall, just some surface rust. So hopefully that'll come out pretty quickly. Uh, now I did keep one seat, one bench seat in here, uh, which you see that I'm sitting on right now, but it looks like I'm going to have to remove that, which I was also expecting. So I'm going to be doing that. And of course I'm going to have build videos of the flooring process, just as I have at least one or two videos of the ceiling. So I've got tons of content. That's not the issue. I'm, of course, I'm not video recording everything that I do simply because a lot of it's mundane and repetitive. Uh, but also, that would be a lot of uh, watching the same thing over and over. And quite frankly, I don't want to bore you guys with that. Uh, but I do have lots of pictures that I'm going to be putting in. So probably the ceiling might be only one video, but I'm hoping I can probably get two videos out of it. But uh, I also installed an antenna, a, a TV antenna, so that's on the top of the bus. It kind of makes the bus look a little bit more like a, like a spacecraft, but, uh, which is interesting having the nickname Wookiee because, uh, you know, this could be my Millennium Falcon. I'm not naming the bus a Millennium Falcon, but it would be funny. But because of the antenna and the fact that I have this very low-powered, high-definition TV, I've had... Uh, some great enjoyment out of watching some TV during my lunch breaks at work because we don't have a break room at work, so uh, That's been very enjoyable. So I do have since I'm gonna have to remove this seat and I'm probably gonna do that tonight uh, I do have a, a a Desk chair. It's a recliner which will actually make watching TV during break a little bit more comfortable But it's a it's a recliner and it's, it's something that I have that I don't necessarily need so I'm going to go ahead and put that in here temporarily so that way I can still have a passenger when necessary. Yes, it's a safety issue, but it's going to be temporary because I am going to be installing uh, yet another project. I'm going to be installing a step van seat in the front right next to the bifold doors and it will have a built-in seat belt. So that will be taken care of after this temporary setback. But so lots of things to look forward to, and as far as changes to my, the way I do videos, well, it's just really only one change, and it's, it is, it's something that I'm testing. Because some of you know I listen to a lot of talk radio at work. Uh, one of my favorite guys, uh, he's a local in Seattle, and he does something called On a Personal Note. So he talks a little bit about, uh, about his life, of course, he's got far better stories because he's, he's uh, a little bit older than I am. And, uh, but it's something that I find rather touching, and I thought maybe you guys would like this. Maybe you won't. I guess you can let me know in the comment section below. But I wanted to, uh, on a personal note, uh, talk a little bit about uh, Memorial Day. Because there was a time in my life, and of course I was much younger back then, and... I used to think, of course, back in school, it was it was that three-day weekend. You know, even as a young adult, you know, I, I thought about it as you know just a you know a paid day off. I never really thought about the meaning behind it, and even in some degree, it's just another way to have a three-day barbecue session. Well, as I've gotten older, keeping in mind I'm only 33 years old, but nevertheless, as I've gotten older, I've uh, grown to have a, a fascination and an appreciation for our military and our first responders, as many of you already know. And Memorial Day has, as a natural consequence, uh, become a much deeper meaning to me. And of course, it's no comparison to any, any family member who's lost a loved one and that's, that served our great country and defended our freedom. And uh, even for those who have or are currently serving, it's a much different perspective than something that I could ever imagine myself. Nevertheless, Memorial Day, uh, as I've come to appreciate it, uh, gives me 
an opportunity to really focus my thoughts and attention on the people who have given their lives for this country. In my opinion, the greatest country on God's green earth. And I've, uh, I've come to appreciate it because it really is the greatest sacrifice. It's the highest price to pay one's own life. And as I've spoken with many people in the military, or at least that served in our great military, uh, one comment that seems to be uh, more and more familiar to me is that those who have actually come home don't call themselves a hero. The heroes are the ones who never came home. And Memorial Day is a tough time for many of them because obviously they know many people who are their true heroes that never came home. I consider anyone who protects our freedom, whether military or first responders, as heroes, heroes of freedom. And yes, the ones that never came home, another level of, of hero. So if there is anyone watching this video who has come home and known many others who did not, my hope is that you are good and that God is comforting you. Thank you for watching. Take care. Love those as you love yourself. And I'll see you next time.